All right, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the big three engine structures: anti-tank gun, anti-air gun, and machine gun nest. Now, over the last six months, there were made a couple huge changes to all of these structures. So this video is a perfectly up-to-date version, which includes all the updates and everything you need to know about how to use these structures and even how to become better with them than anyone else. So the most basic knowledge about them is that you can only build them with your engineer squads. Meaning putting engineers and other squads won't work. It, they will still be able to build all of the other stuff like rally points, first and foremost. But the big tree engineer structures are only buildable in the engineer squads themselves. So in order to do that, you need to unlock the technology for these structures in the blue technology tree for your engineer squad. This is the same where you unlock additional squad slots and additional experience for your squads and so on. So once you unlock them, you can play, you can build anti-tank guns and anti-air guns with your engineer 1 squad and your engineer 2 squad can build these two plus machine gun lists. So, well, <coughs> how do you use them? Very simple. The anti-tank gun has the big advantage of making it possible for your normal soldiers, meaning your infantry squads, to easily deal with tanks from very far away. And especially with tanks that you usually would be able to penetrate, not even with normal tanks. For example, here in Moscow, this anti-tank gun can penetrate basically every enemy tank that the Soviets throw at you, especially the overpowered T-50 and even T-34, if you get a good hit. Your normal tanks that you can use, even the very high level ones, are gonna struggle a lot. So this is already a big, big advantage that you have. Now, what you also can do is, you can use the, as you can see on the top uh, right lower corner, right now I have loaded anti-infantry shells and I was shelling the infantrists. And let me take a step back. Here we are shelling the infantrists. Ah, right away, first thing to know, you can destroy other structures. You can use anti-tank guns perfectly for blowing up enemy anti-air guns or enemy anti-tank guns. So, obviously, the anti-tank gun is the king of the three structures in that regard. And if you load your, your anti-infantry shells, you can just start easily shelling the enemy infantry. Now, very important, if you want high splash damage, shoot at soldiers, preferably on the top part of the body. So, as you can see here, so the body explodes and you have a spherical explosion. Uh, sp spherical explosion effect. If you shoot on the ground, half of this shrapnel will just stay on the ground and the damage you deal is much lower. Yeah. So shoot, uh, try to shoot at soldiers in the top part of the body, so the body explodes and you deal lots of damage with your actual <laughs> uh, shrapnel effect. Now, if you want to pierce tanks, you obviously want to, well, you obviously want to use your piercing shells, the APC anti-tank shells. Well, these shells uh, have a strong penetration effect, they have a weaker splash effect, so using them against infantry will most of the time only kill the one soldier you actually hit, and the soldier standing right next to him won't take any damage. But they are obviously perfect for penetrating enemy tanks. And they are absolutely deadly against low level tanks, and they are even good against high level tanks. Yeah. So if you, if you for example here, the tanks, by the way let's move forward, the tanks we see here, uh, they die with, alright, you see, this shot didn't do anything. You see in the top right corner of the screen, the tank cam and this shell just completely bounced off. But the next shell, oh, the next shell perfectly penetrated. So yeah, the first I, the first shot was very bad. I just hit a, sp a spot on the tank where, where there was sloped armor and also strong armament. But the second one hit perfectly a weak spot without sloped armor. Now here... And it perfectly hit the the ammunition box. So even the little damage that it deals after penetrating the armament is enough to just blow the tank up. Here, what we did is we once again we well the first shot wasn't that good. Yeah, you see once again bad bad hit, sloped armor, and very thick armament part. But now we hit right in the turret, and you see it penetrates exactly through the soldier. It penetrates right into the 
well, machinery of the tank and the tank explodes. So yeah, this is how you want to do it. Now, the last question that remains here is, how do you place your anti-tank gun? Here I placed it, literally, as easily visible as possible, on top of a hill, even, yeah, literally on top of the hill, and completely visible by the enemies. We're attacking, and the enemies obviously are facing our spawn area, and they can easily see this anti-tank gun. Now, not from everywhere, because I have a couple trees around me, so this is already one thing. And also, depending on, well, all, all of the stuff that's lying there, if someone is behind it, he obviously can't see me. But I obviously know that, well, there can be enemies there, and keep in mind, you can penetrate wood, and you can even penetrate walls of buildings with your, with your shells. Not only the penetration shells, but also high explosive shells, so try ju just try it out to shoot through wood and see if you get any effect from it. Yeah. Now here, this is a high risk, high reward. Obviously, I'm very easily spotted, so if the tanks see me first, I'm gonna be dead. But if I they see them first, they're gonna be dead too. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be dead too. So I, I really gladly take this trade, because these two tanks obviously weren't fast, and they're paid for their slowness. Now, the other way of building anti-tank guns is by just quickly building it in a hidden spot where enemies won't expect you and the trade-off is, well, basically you don't have a large field that you can see. For example, here you, you have a, we have a building on the right side that protects us and there's a building in front of us so everyone behind the building also can't see us. But we also are very limited in terms of what we can actually hit. But the big advantage is the following. If you have your fast building perk on the, on the engineers, they're gonna build your structure much faster than usual, yeah? Now, since we have, well, currently three engineers alive, I can also press X while I'm building, and this is gonna make every engineer build hell building. So the building speed is gonna be ridiculously fast. Now, this enables you to, under the new update, which, which almost doubled the time, uh, which almost doubled the building speed, this enables you to build lightning fast. For example, let's check it. One, two, three, four, five, basically five seconds, maybe even just four seconds. Very fast building speed, yeah? Very fast building speed. The, if, you, if the tank doesn't kill us instantly, and if he shoots, if he doesn't hit us, well, we will, we're going to have enough time to get the first hit. So this is the other way of basically using other tank guns. Just get a hidden spot, basically ambush, ambush something. Most of the time it will be tanks. Build it quickly and just build it where no one expects it. For example, here, this is very close to the enemy gray zone. This tank just was alive for ba basically 10 seconds, maybe, and we instantly destroyed him. So, yeah, the surprise factor is huge. Surprise factor is huge. Less so against infantry because they obviously will be able to shoot you, especially if they have semi auto or full auto weapons. But tanks, well, if the tanks miss their first hit or. If the tanks just don't see you, because obviously their their well line of sight is the area of view is very limited, so very often you can just start building straight in front or next to a tank. If the tank doesn't doesn't happen to look your way, he will just miss you, and you will get a very good shot. Now keep in mind you can only build one anti tank gun, so whenever you build one and you don't need it anymore. Click J to deconstruct, to destroy it, so you get A, part of the resources you spend building it back, and B, since there's no entertain gun on the field, you can build a new one. Very important, there's no worse thing than having an entertain gun lying around somewhere and just, well, <laughs> not being able to build a new one when you need it. So, keep that in mind, be very flexible, be very fast, use them basically as a, as a very... Almost like a sniper weapon. Yeah, you're stalking around with your engineers and you're looking what the enemy is doing And when you see a good target, you just instantly build something and instantly destroy it This, this is gonna be how you get the most effect out of your engineer squads Well, so what about the anti-air gun? Well, now here we see the situation that an enemy plane is attacking us and I tried to hit it with the machine gun nest I was currently using but the machine gun nest can't really aim upwards so we jump straight into our anti-air gun. Now the most important thing is you can see here, never build one when you see an enemy plane, 
you always have to build the anti-air gun before you see the enemy plane, because unlike tanks, planes are extremely fast. And they are much more mobile than you, and they will instantly see something shooting from, <laughs> from the ground, sh especially shooting upwards in the sky. Yeah, So they will instantly notice you and instantly kill you. Also, if you read World War II reports, guess what planes, uh, guess what the big task of enemy planes was? Well, destroying anti-air guns, because <laughs> if depending on the plane, they were extremely good at destroying anti-air guns. For example, the Stukas in the Eastern Front destroyed lots of anti-air guns. So, yeah, you absolutely have to have it ready. For example, here the game started, this is already a long game, but once, once the game started, I quickly built a machine gun nest, an anti-air gun, and another anti-air gun, because you can build two of them, unlike the other two structures, which you can only have one at a time, and I built an anti-tank gun, so you have everything ready. Now here I switched instantly to the anti-air gun, once I saw the plane, and you see you're gonna get a helping circle, and you aim at the helping circle, and you're gonna get a couple hits. And we're hitting and hitting and hitting, and we see, oh my god, stuff is falling out of the plane. Now if the, if the enemy plane you're shooting at starts losing metal parts, yeah, that's a bad sign for him, definitely. And yeah, especially if... Yeah, his engine completely stopped and now he's falling apart and guess what? He's dead. And we see IL-2 destroyed. Easy life. Yeah, so this is how you use it. Have your anti-air guns ready. This is the big mistakes, mistake people do. And then they complain they never get plane kills. Well, you have to have it ready. Another thing you can do with anti-air guns is that you can block doorways with them since they're gigantic. This is very nasty and very effective. Just if you have a small gateway or gate or door where you're gonna expect people want to get through, but you don't want your enemies to get through, they just built a big booty anti-air gun there and they won't be able to get through. Especially if you destroy it and it starts burning or if you throw a molotov at it, then people can't even squeeze themselves around the edges because they're gonna start burning. So extremely effective. And another thing, since you can build two anti-air guns, you always have, theoretically, a spare one. Now, if you have an anti-tank gun waiting in an open field for an enemy tank coming, what you can do is build just build an anti-air gun next to it. In a way that the tank is gonna, well, see it in the moment when you will see him with your anti-tank gun. Because this way, the enemy won't be able to resist to destroy the anti-air gun. Obviously, every tank is gonna destroy an anti-air gun. It just takes one easy shot, sometimes two. So it's basically a nice and free destruction. But guess what? <laughs> when he's distracted by the anti-air gun, you can start shooting him with your anti-tank gun. So this is another good thing. Anti-air guns are big targets. Everyone likes to destroy them. And yeah, just obviously destroy them this way. Very effective and very welcome. Now, at the end of the video, you're gonna see something that's not usually actually not possible anymore. It used to be that you can A, shoot with your anti-air gun indefinitely until your rounds are empty, and so basically over, without overheating. Now it's not possible. Now you absolutely need to keep in mind the overheating. Same thing with the machine guns, which are by with the overheating, by the way, is extremely unrealistic. It's too extreme. It needs to be reduced. And you see the red circle is overheating. And yeah, once I reach the maximum, I can't shoot anymore. So it's better to stay basically one or two shots under the maximum overheating so you can keep shooting. Another trick to keep in mind, once you overheat it, just leave your anti-air gun and start reloading. You reload all of the structures by leaving it, pressing 2, so you can build theoretically new stuff, and then pressing T, looking at the structure, and then you're gonna reload. This way you can reload while it's overheating and you don't lose time in the future for reloading. This is like the perfect speed. And machine gun nests you actually don't need to reload, they have infinite ammunition. Now before you could b shoot with the anti-air gun at infantry, which is also how it was very commonly used in World War II, because anti-air guns are basically always either machine guns or full automatic cannons, that you mount together in one, two, three, or four, or however many next to each other, and then you just shoot at planes. Anti-air guns aren't specialized things, they are just <laughs> they are just standardized things that you can use for many different tasks. So 
it's completely normal to shoot at infantry. Problem is, this was so overpowered that it was nerfed and people used to complain constantly about it. So now you can't lower the angle of your anti-air gun horizontally anymore. Meaning you can't shoot at infantry. For example here, you see, well, it doesn't get that low. You see my circle, my white circle is quite low, but the crosshair is like two centimeters above it. So it's clearly not low enough to shoot at enemies. Unless the enemy is A on top of a hill, as here for example, Fioretti, well, it's still too, too, too high, but, well, if the, hill, if the hill was higher, I actually could shoot people there. For example, yeah, if someone jumps on top of the wood, I could theoretically hit him, but yeah. This is the one thing. The, the other thing, though, is, well, let's use some trickery, and the trickery is the following. Well, here we have the following situation. The enemy is coming from this hill, over there behind us, then there's a tank too, which for some reason... Well, uh, doesn't get killed by anyone, although he's surrounded by enemies. And we are on a slightly elevated position. And here comes the big fancy trick. You see, I'm going... You see how the machine gun nest is facing downwards? This is not really high. This is not a hill, it's just a little bit higher than usual. But this little angle, if the angle is around 45 degrees, it's, more, it's all that you need, because the minimum angle at which you can angle your anti-air gun downwards is also around 45 degrees. So if you're standing up or if you can build your anti-air gun facing down the same angle, you basically neutralize the minimum and you can get a perfect flat horizontal aiming. So this is how what's we're gonna good uh, what we're gonna do now. We're grabbing our anti-air gun and you see very slightly downward, but it's actually gonna be enough. <laughs> it's actually gonna be enough. So let's try it out. We're building, we're building, and oh my god, have you seen that? It was enough to actually face in to shoot into the ground. <laughs> yeah, not even horizontally, we can actually shoot into the ground. So yeah, let's try it out. Shoot at the tank, you see no effect. There's basically, there are very, very, very few tanks you can actually penetrate with your 20mm anti-air guns. But you can easily penetrate wood. For example, buildings, exactly. Well, don't expect to survive for long if you're such a nasty boy who does this trick. You instantly get slapped by the enemy tank, but still, usually, my recommendation is, if you want to be really good, just look out for spots in the map where you can do this. And just do it. Now, you can't do it on hills, because if the angle downward is too extreme, you can't build a structure. You can only do it exactly on these little positions, on these little spots where it's not too extreme. Another thing you can do is you can just take your shovel. Some engineers are, sp are spawning with shovels when you buy them in the logistics and others you just have to buy a shovel which doesn't cost much and then you give them a shovel instead of a knife or instead of a hammer and then you can start shoveling. And if you shovel a little hole, try it out yourself you can actually, a little hole takes a couple of seconds, you can actually start building your anti-air gun in this little hole. And then you're gonna get the same effect as we had here. You just, well, build the anti-air gun there and start shooting at enemies. And the enemies will be surprised why they are, well, why they are getting shredded again. Like it was the beginning of 2020 or beginning of 2022 with anti-air guns. Well, guess what? If you're being smart as an engineer, you can literally solve any problem. Which is, well, which is what being an engineer is about. You have a situation, you want to improve it, or you have an actual problem that you need to quickly solve. And here the problem was enemies are pushing hard and hiding in this building there. And obviously we want to get them out of there, so let's build an anti air gun. Let's place it very smartly and just kill everyone in the building without him noticing us. If there wasn't this tank, we would have killed basically 10, 20 enemies. Yeah, and they can't do anything against you because you're hidden behind the big anti-air gun shields. Yeah, these, all of these dudes spawning there on the hill, spawning behind the hill. Once they reach the top of the hill, they would instantly die. If they build a rally point downhill, it will be instantly destroyed. If they hide in the building, they will all die and not know what's <laughs> how it happened. And if they hide behind the building, 
same fate, all everyone gets destroyed. So you see, if you can actually manage to use the anti-air gun against enemy infantry, you have possibly the strongest thing in the game, because between the fast building speed, the protection it gives you, and the extreme damage output and penetration, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And if you give your engineers good weapons in addition to that, you actually have possibly the strongest squad that there is in the game. Now for those of you wondering, oh man, this is all unfair, these things are overpowered, they need to be nerfed or banned, don't fear, there's actually a very simple solution. All of these structures, well, the big two structures that have some armament, like anti-air and anti-tank guns, they can be easily destroyed, as you can see here. We are jumping around, we want to get inside this room, and we see suddenly, oh my god. This thing is shooting, is aiming exactly at our head. So first of all, we get out of there. And since we are soldier, we're gonna be faster at moving than him. And he obviously misses. And well, now let's punish him. We grab our Panzerfaust 100 and we just shoot him. And not only does the thing explode, but also the people using it explode. So yeah. <laughs> and it's burning, so you better not stand too close to it because you're also gonna get fire damage. So this is the big trick, very simple, use any anti-tank rifle, even the weak ones work. Yeah, because they have all penetration, just shoot at it, it's gonna get exploded and you're gonna get kills. Same thing goes for anti-air guns, just shoot at them and they're gonna explode. Very simple. Machine gun nests are even e easier to deal with. A, you can just shoot the dude who's using it in the head, or you shoot straight into the machine gun and it gets destroyed. And in that case you're gonna get a machine gun suppressed notification or a structure suppressed notification. So yeah, this is also the reason why machine gun nests aren't that strong. They are way too easy to deal with. But they are also possibly the strongest against infantry, so let's learn how to use them. Now here we're gonna see the reason why machine gun nests only come in Engineer 2 squads, not in Engineer 1 squads. They are plain dirty when you manage to use them well. Now what we do here is first we are, well let's go to the start. First of all we are jumping in a building to hide. Now as I already explained they are extremely easy to destroy. Yeah? This is by the way our Engineer 2 squad. You can see by the fact that we can use a machine gun nest and it's it takes quite a long time to, to build and we can only build one. So it's quite precious already and it's easy to destroy and we are easily to, easy to kill this, all of this means we want to hide it. You basically never want to build in a position where it's easily spotted because you, you're gonna find out if you do the mistake that you're gonna get this killed instantly and it's gonna get destroyed instantly and you're just gonna be depressed and annoyed. Now, in order to avoid this, just build it somewhere where you are hidden, preferably in a house. So let's build it here. By the way, I could also just close the door and if a teammate tells me enemies are coming from the hill, I, I would shoot through the door and I could penetrate the door and kill them and they wouldn't even see who's killing them. This is another trick you can do. But here obviously we open the door because I, well, I don't speak with anyone in this, in this game. And we see enemies are coming and no matter where they are, we can just shoot them. Keep in mind, machine gun nests have a very limited angle where they can, where you can go left, right, up and down. So it won't always work to put them on the first or second floor, for example. But here, it's just straight under. It's just straight on the ground. Oh, I st actually had teammates who could tell me, but <laughs> well, it's still always better to just uh, have an open door to see what you're shooting at. And yeah, just build it. As you can see here, it takes a lot of time, even with the fast building perk, but it absolutely pays off. On the left side, we have three walls. So no one is going to shoot us. The machine gun itself is is naturally sticking out. Maybe the maybe one part is sticking out. So it would have been smart to build it a little bit more behind in the building. That was possibly a mistake. But well, we don't. We're not getting really shot. We see lots of enemies, and we see the enemies are shooting at us. They try to hit us. But since we most of our body is hiding behind sandbags, we actually have <laughs> we actually have well, a good protection. So, except for headshots, we're gonna survive everything. And the only way to deal with us is to throw a good grenade. But for that reason, he needs to be basically exactly 
in our line of sight. So this won't work. He can come up quickly and throw a cooked grenade in. This is possible. But this is something that very few players will manage to pull off. Or he can just use a machine gun, uh, an anti panzer faust or stuff like that, and a tank rifle or a sniper rifle to deal with us. But once again, this is the part where strategy comes in. This is the beginning of the game, and the game literally just started. The enemies who are attacking still have 1000 lives, so not a single squad of them died. And they absolutely don't expect what's happening to them. Yeah, The game just started. The first thing I did was I ran into this building. And I instantly build this machine gun. You can see I have just one engineer point. So this is the only thing I built in the game. And literally all of what I did except for that is after that is just shooting enemies. And we instantly got 11 kills. So this is a good first shock to the enemies. And once, the, once you do something like that, the enemies are going to completely over commit to what you're doing. And try to get rid of this machine gun nest. If they destroy it eventually, well, it doesn't matter, you just run away, build a rally point, since you haven't done yet in this game, and you build your machine gun nest somewhere else, maybe even in a more open field, because they will be scared of this particular position. So yeah, this is how you do your machine gunning, you stay very flexible, you stay hidden, and if they destroy, just go build a new one, and don't expect to stay there for the next 20 minutes, just expect there to get... Ten, like 10 to 15 kills is already very good and if anything above it is ridiculously strong and well <laughs> after you've done that just build a new one and you can keep doing this or build anti-air guns anti tank guns because enemies are going to be coming with tanks and you're going to completely dominate the game with your structures all right now you know everything there is to know about the big tree engineer structures how to build them how to use them and especially all the advanced tricks that the game doesn't tell you so use them in your games have lots of fun have lots of wins because i guarantee you you're gonna get many more wins once you start using those engineer squads and make sure you like and subscribe so you get your weekly dose of three to four deep strategy guides or game guides and see you next time Goodbye.